created by um, six out of the seven employees who work at Oregon Art Supply. And and it's really cool stuff, lots of different um, media. I was trying to come up with what the theme is for the show, and I really do think that they captured it when they said it's the connection between all of the artists here is that they all work here, and that that's that's the common thread. Um, so all of the work is really different and distinct. And um, I, I think I want to start actually with um, Shannon's work. Shannon, would you come up? Um, I love so I really love these. And I understand yes. that they were inspired by your walk to yes. work. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about them? Sure. Um, yeah, well, okay. Um, well, I, I walk here every day um, and walk home. And the, my most favorite parts of the day are in the morning and in the evening at dusk. Um, the buildings of Eugene, um, I'm a fairly new resident of Eugene. And I, I'm very uh, fascinated by the architecture and the light and the structure of all the buildings not just in the downtown district, but also in the residential areas that I absolutely love it. Um, it's just one of my favorite things, and I take a lot of photos, and these are ones are my favorite that I took. And uh, unfortunately, the one uh, on the far uh, right on the top is actually uh, Baker City, Oregon. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not Eugene. Um, it's I stopped there on a on a trip I had just recently, and it's my favorite place in Oregon. And the hotel I stayed at, so I had to capture it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So they're all watercolor um, on uh, paper mounted to panel, and yeah. <laughs> that. That really explains it because I was looking at these and I was like, I know where that one is. Yeah. I know where that one is. Yeah. Where is that one? Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Shannon, do you. Is there anything else that you would like to tell the group about your process <laughs> or what um, inspires you? Well, um, just the general. Um, I'm really into design work and uh, architecture and. Um, that's pretty much been fascinating me uh, to, to do these pieces. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, great. Um, Jordan, can I have you come up next? Yeah. Um, so Jordan's work is over here. <laughs> uh, the, the tidbit that I heard about you is that you paint every day. Um. I certainly try to, uh, <laughs> not necessarily, um, but yeah, I, these are works mostly, um, you know, based around the Oregon area, um, mostly west from here and along the coast. I 
typically try to go hiking uh, every week or two, and I take a lot of reference photos while I'm out hiking. I also paint on location when I get the chance, which is not nearly as much as I want to, um, but it's hard, so I do every now and then. You can actually, if you look closely in the Washburn sand painting over there, you can actually see grains of sand in there, because it was a very windy day, and uh, sand does tend to get caught in plein air paintings. Uh, so there's that. And yeah, I do do a lot of smaller studies like this uh, on at least a weekly basis, if not a daily basis. Um, and they influence a lot of the larger works I do. I do um, natural history and fantasy illustration work as well. So all of my landscape work feeds into that and it all goes uh, back and forth. So cool. yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, great, thank you. Um, Clayton, can we talk about your work a little bit? Yeah. So Clayton's work is the the paper um, scenes, yeah. kind of cutouts, and they've got a lot of layers, um, a really distinctive illustrative style. Yeah. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about what we're yeah. seeing? Uh, okay, hello. Um, <laughs> they're mostly... Ideas. Hello. Okay, the ideas. Are... <laughs> about um, the internet and how connected people are now and the different types of relationships you can have and know people that you've never actually met in real life. And uh, kind of also the idea of all kinds of different stuff that people do with their hands. Yeah. Um, there's no color because I wanted them to look like machines. Uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. And um, something that I was wondering about with a lot of the artists here is, are you, do you get inspired by all the materials that are around you here in the uh, shop? The opposite happens, actually. Yeah. Yes. I, um, <laughs> yeah, I uh, talk a lot about paint all day and color and stuff, and so I, when I go do my own art, I don't use any of that. So. <laughs> Thanks, Clayton. <laughs> um, okay, Megan. So Megan's work is in the, on the end here, and um, it's woodcuts, and there's some lino cuts, a lot of natural elements that are represented. Do you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. Um, so pretty much all of my work focuses on um, natural processes and uh, relationships in the environment. Um, and I always kind of think if I wasn't an artist, I would be a scientist. So I kind of try and merge that a lot, and that's something I, I think about a lot when I'm when I'm making art. Well, thank you for sharing it with us. It's lovely. Thanks very much. And um, let's call up now Lindsay. <laughs> about your, your piece over here? Um, well, I haven't made art in a while. Uh, and this is imagery I've used before for a completely different project. Um, and I just found it kind of perfectly suited to express uh, some ideas that I've been researching and reading about and meditating on for the past year about um, how our egos kind of define our decision making and how when we kind of blindly move through life just clawing upwards from forces that we don't either understand or you know acknowledge we end up just kind of causing uh, I don't know unspeakable destruction to each other <laughs> and to ourselves and to our planet and uh, I don't know, most shamefully I feel like we, we, uh, we create categories of people, you know, in order to control and destroy them. And as good as all that sounds, <laughs> uh, I find that the solutions to these problems are pretty simple and easy and liberating and I don't know. I'd be happy to talk about it more with any of you afterwards, but yeah, this is, that's what was on my mind when I, when I made that. And uh, just a side note, I just want to say that 
bring recycling is an excellent place to go for art supplies. <laughs> because I saw those drill bits and I just knew that I had to do something with them and it ended up being being perfectly incorporated. So yeah. 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 Did the window frame also come from Brain? It did. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And Laura, all right, and Laura's pieces are the, the two um, cut paper and pastel, is mm -hmm. that right? Yes. Um, so tell us a little bit about those. So um, I moved here about two years ago, and um, ever since I've moved here, I've kind of been like on a journey. Um, like to, There's a lot of like spirituality happening here, and I've um, really... Um, picked up on that and so that sort of led me to do some research about like mythology and um, uh, premonition and stuff like that um, which is uh, what I'm really interested in um, right now is um, symbols of myth um, and superstition and um, these two pieces here um, both of them are kind of a um, they both uh, represent good and bad things. So like a snake, if you see it, a lot of times it uh, um, represents something bad. Um, but in a lot of cultures, uh, it's uh, actually a um, symbol of creation. And, um, and like the a ladder is, um, is a symbol of um, bad luck, but it's also like helps us uh, do the work that we do. Yes. So um, those would be the two inspirations. questions one on one so yeah. thanks can i just thank say you. a real quick thank you to clayton for organizing this whole Yay. thing and creating yes. us like the cast that we are <laughs> this is the first staff show at organ arts with no. with this group yeah, okay years. Years awesome ago. yeah cool group of folks. Yeah. it's great to see all of the creativity coming out so thank you guys for sharing with us Thank you. jazz tonight, although maybe a little bit of it has a bit of a jazzy sound. I'm going to be doing a lot of my own music, um, more singer-songwriter as well as some of my favorite covers. Um, so I hope you enjoy. Yay. We're all friends here, right? Crumbling castle, while the pretty 
you've stripped away the crown Should have built my own damn house. than the future or the past, which is harder than it sounds for most of us, myself included. It's called Life is Not a VCR. It's the working title. Bye. 
life looks so much better when seeing the freedom of maturity. And everybody hates all the years of the drama and tears that accompany the slow and tortured march of youth.
to see you all this evening. Welcome to the third stop on the First Friday Art Walk at the Karen Clark Gallery. Please give Karen a hand. She's right over here. I just want to say as a sidebar note, not in my notes, that I really appreciate this gallery. And I really, really appreciate the investment she keeps making in the arts in our city. It makes a big difference. So. Tonight's Art Walk is sponsored by Shelter Care. Give them a hand. They are a local nonprofit hosting the sixth annual fundraiser and art auction on May 19. Proceeds will help homeless families regain their independence. You can visit the bar and light between 5 and 8 tonight for details and a chance to win some tickets. And now I get to introduce Carol Marine. And she's going to tell you about her work and tell you where in this room her work is, right? What motivates her, hopefully, what, what she likes to, to paint and want. Anything else you want to say about yourself? And I believe she has even a book over here, right, Carol? Several. Several. There you go. Vanna is showing those to you right now. <laughs> All right. Great. I'm going to hand this over to Carol. Give her a big hand. Uh, my name is Carol Marine. Um, I've been an artist for a long time. I can't remember the questions that you asked me. My paintings are on this wall and this wall and a little bit right on either side of the door that you came in. And I like to paint lots of different things. Um, I think primarily I'm known for my still lifes, but I am really enjoying painting people lately and cityscapes uh, and, and flowers and all sorts of things. Um, I what used to be in a lot of galleries about uh, 10 years ago. And then um, we, my, my husband and I, who's right here, David, uh, we adopted our son and I kind of stopped painting. And um, about a year and a half into having a baby, uh, a friend of mine came over with an article from USA Today about this daily painting movement. And it's all about painting small and often. And these guys who were doing it were putting them online uh, selling each little painting, maybe six by six inches, uh, in auction online, starting at about $100, and they were making a living. And since I wasn't making a living at that point, selling large paintings in galleries, I decided to try it. So for the last 10 years, I have been selling just about every day on, uh, online, uh, one small painting, and making my living that way. It's been really fantastic. Um, a few years ago, I got asked by Random House to write a book about it, so that's the book that's over there. Um, and then we were living in Texas, and then our house burned down in a forest fire four years ago, and so we moved to Eugene. We're glad you're here. Thank you. <laughs> we love Eugene. And, uh, and so about, uh, I don't know how many months ago, Karen Clark asked me to do some, some paintings for a, a little show, and I thought that it would encourage me to do some different stuff. So that's what I did, and that's the work that's here. It's bigger than my normal six by sixes, um, and a little bit more varied material. And I had a lot of fun, and I hope you enjoyed looking at it. So, now you are here. I don't know how many of you had a chance to really look at her work, but if you have any questions for her, please uh, hold up your hand, and we'll try to, she'll try to answer you right over here. Uh, it was Let's repeat the question first. There's a scene with trees and light. Uh, trees, street. 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 Oh, that one with yeah. beautiful light behind it. And she wants to know where it is. And what time of day is that? And what time of day got that light? Um, that was San Francisco. I was in the Mission District walking to my Airbnb apartment. And uh, I looked down the street and the sun was setting and it was just really beautiful. And I will say, as a, as a side note, that I had to take about five pictures to get the light right. Because, you know, a camera doesn't really capture all that light. And so I had to take pictures of the cityscape and then pictures of just the sky and then sort of combine them in the painting. Yeah, the light's beautiful. Thank you. Other questions? Yes. What type of painting sell best online? <laughs> That's a really good question. 
<laughs> um, I, I will tell you that according to most people, landscapes sell the best. My landscapes don't sell the best because I don't do them very well. Um, so for me, still life sells the best. Still life sells the best. Yes. yes. Okay. Other questions? Anyone? Yes. I'm going to let you speak loudly into that. How, let's say you're sitting there and you feel an urge to paint. How do you decide what to paint? How do I decide what not to paint? <laughs> there are so many things to paint. I, I just, I get up in the morning and I just go for the first thing that makes me excited. I have, I take trips all the time and I take a bunch of pictures and I just, I'll flip through you know, some trips, pictures, and go, oh, this one, I have to paint this right now. And that's kind of how it happens. Others? Anyone? Anyone? I don't see any others. You have any question you think I should ask her? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, and then I want everybody to have a chance to really see your work and appreciate it. And thank you so much for being here. Give her a hand.
So hello everybody, welcome, glad you're here. This is the fourth stop on the First Friday Art Walk at Eco Sleep Solutions and Gallery. Hope you have a good look around and see all the beautiful things here. Okay, and then, sponsor message. Tonight's Art Walk is sponsored by Shelter Care. Yay, Shelter Care. A local nonprofit hosting its sixth annual fundraiser and art auction on May 19. Proceeds will help homeless families regain their independence. Visit the Barn Light, which is just a short distance from here, between 5 and 8 tonight for details and a chance to win tickets. I have the pleasure of introducing Cedar Caridio, who will be present. He's here. He will, will be present. He's present. <laughs> and uh, you see his beautiful wood pieces around here. He's going to talk to you about those and um, show you where everything is, I think, and probably what inspires him, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Okay? okay. Yeah, good. have at it. And, and uh, Stephen White is also here. Stephen, where are you? And he's gonna show, they've done some collaborative work together, and then Stephen's work is around here too. So I'm gonna hand this over to Cedar, who will inspire you, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, before we uh, get started here, um, I want to thank Jim and Donna, who are the owners of Eco Sleep Solutions. Yeah. As our city loses uh, places for artists to show work, they've been a steady uh, for the, for many of us. So uh, appreciate it. Okay, let's pause and thank them for doing yeah. that. Okay, let's see, on to uh, pieces. Um, prob uh, inspiration, nature, a lot of birds. I love bird watching uh, and always have for many years. And my wife and I get to go to Finley and you know some of the uh, Fern Ridge and, and see a lot of the, the wildlife birds. Uh, and not just birds, but uh, flora and fauna, you know, place is so important. And the Pacific Northwest is um, just a real special place. Um, after taking a, a, a cruise up to Alaska uh, last summer and coming back, uh, I just kind of got the scope, a little bit bigger scope of the area we live in, and it's just remarkable. Uh, the wood I use, a lot of it's reclaimed wood. It's uh, indigenous wood from this area. Uh, the cedars in particular, western red, uh, yellow cedar, and also Port Orford, which is only found here in Oregon. Um, so I'll collect the wood on the, you know, go down to Bandon after a storm and pull in some logs and stuff like that, which is a lot of fun. Um, and Stefan's here and I, I don't want to uh, keep him. So uh, Stefan, he... Um, right over there. We worked on a piece, well first off, the story goes that I was working on these herons, it's over in the corner here, and I, you know, after working on these dancing herons, um, it, it's in Western Red Cedar, I kept looking at it, and, and you know, Stefan and I have been friends for several years, and I've seen his gorgeous lamps for a long time, and, and it just, I thought, oh, this has just got to be a lamp. And, and I, phoned, I phoned him up and said, Stefan, you, you got to take it from here. And so, I'm going to let him take it from there because he knows the story better after that. Well, I was totally thrilled when uh, Cedar contacted me and said, let's collaborate because it's actually the first time in my 50 plus year career that I have collaborated with, with another artist. And um, I was unclear in the beginning as to what I was going to do. So the uh, his beautiful sculpture sat in my studio for a couple of months at least. And I knew one thing I didn't want to do was just put a lamp on top of it, uh, which would be somehow a logical thing to do, but not the most creative. So um, my inspiration, I think, came more from Art Nouveau. And um, when I 
kind of got into that um, you know mode, uh, it just developed. It just, just began to uh, you know, create itself in a sense, and. Um, it's a very unique piece because it's a collaboration and it's unique in my uh, genre because it's, I've never done anything like it. And thank you so much for asking. Oh. <laughs> thank you. I, after, uh, from my end now, a couple of months went by and, and Stefan finally phones up and he goes, I've got it, I've got it, after several sleepless nights and you know how it just kind of nags at you and, and and so it was great it was wonderful and collaboration uh, on that theme because I think for me that's probably the most important thing at this time in my life uh, there's an artist on the stairs uh, Mark Andrew and Robin as well uh, and Mark is a, a sculptor and has been for 40 plus years we won't give him your age Mark uh, and, and he works in stone, uh, bronze, and wood as well, and he's been a real inspiration. We're in the same studio with uh, Randy Ortiz, and Randy was here earlier, I don't see Randy right now. Uh, okay, um, but the collaboration and the, uh, just being around that kind of creative juices is extremely symbiotic and synergistic and all those words. Um, uh, it, you know, pieces like I look at this one alabaster piece, and of course I always run it by Mark, and you know, so what do you think, Mark? Would you do this? <laughs> nah, I wouldn't do that. Or, or yeah, sure, go for it. So that, it's on a daily basis. It's really, really great and fun and, and extremely helpful. But this piece, Randy, there's a lot of metal work, and that's Randy's work. So. Um, you know, that kind of collaboration is, uh, it's magical, and I, I just really love it. Um, so anyway, that's kind of, we're at 299 Garfield. Um, we have a large, old school studio. It kind of looks like a, what, turn of the century European uh, cement floors with falling down cedar walls. Uh, no heat in the winter. Um, but you know what, we have stones and we're working this and that and um, you know we, we definitely uh, invite people to come and see our, our work and we're planning at some point, Mark, uh, is that right? Fall show. Fall show. And so uh, yeah, that, we're getting geared up for that. Fall show and workshop. That's right, that's right. So um, feel free to, to come by. We're good? Yeah. <laughs> but stay here because I'm going to see if anybody has any questions for oh, you. Okay. Oh, yeah. Does anyone have any questions that they'd like to ask about his work or... Yes? Can you point out which ones are yours? Uh, yeah, well, let's see. Pretty much all the wood and stone carvings, sculptures, so all the bigger pieces, the, the mask, the helmet mask, uh, the wall piece, uh, you know, large, this large piece, that one. Uh, oh, wall pieces here, mask there. I kind of get into series, so I'll do, especially if uh, uh, I'll do series of pieces. So like the helmet mask, I did like five. And these standing um, kind of pieces, uh, northwest woods, I guess, uh, flora and fauna with a, some kind of bird. You know that that I highlighted a, a pileated woodpecker. You know, just beautiful, love them. And uh, the uh, the owl, which that one is a great gray owl. You know, cascades. And the challenge there was to sculpt it, but the final challenge was to make it like fit it camouflage, to kind of fit in with the background. And I was I'm not a painter. But, oh, it was fun. I, I felt like a painter. Uh, and I used wood dye and a little bit of, that one, it was primarily wood dye with just a little bit of uh, acrylic, like the eyes and stuff. Uh, so, uh, once again, western red cedar. And I do sometimes highlight with copper. It's just northwest. It's a northwest thing, you know. It's the native people here used a lot of cedar and they would use copper. And, and I kind of, I'm influenced by that place once again, you know, so it's uh, a lot of fun that way. Another piece in the back, 
that's an older piece of water bird with stone. I do use stone a lot with, the, uh, with wood. I'll inlay sometimes a semi-precious stone, sometimes shells, that one piece there. So I do use uh, numerous things. Uh, Day of the Grateful Dead has <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of uh, uh, glass in it. I've been, I really want to have started piercing through more and trying to get the light through it and, and, uh, and uh, you know, getting some inspiration from people that are experts on the, on the theme. So um, uh, that's kind of the journey, yeah. yeah. Back across the wall. Oh yeah, back, back across the wall there's a few pieces. Um, that was a piece of driftwood and given to me by a, a fisherman in Newport. So I had to do the scene of the killer whale chasing the the salmon with the person swimming <laughs> and uh, so yeah that's kind of uh, the you know what's going on thematic place northwest using materials here so since I seem to have at least one two three four maybe artists that I can see in the room yeah. I would just ask the question so what would you like from your city to, uh, to support the arts um, um. <laughs> Louder. Reopen the Jacobs Gallery. Yeah. Yeah. You, have to, you have to talk to their board about that. Yeah. Or, well, they were talking about at one point the, the, uh, the post office. So I can tell you that yeah. um, I love, I love to keep it. So the answer to the Jacobs Gallery is that's a decision that was made by their board. The answer to the post office, I want to tell you, I love the post office. I love the piece of art in it. I love the whole thing. I went all the way to D.C. to talk to the post office about it, and uh, they said, we're not selling. And, but when we do, we're going to get the highest price we can get. And, uh, and I said, well, will you at least give us first, first, and they said, no, you'll get a notice just like everybody else. So I think it means we need a change of administration or... Uh, uh, not administration, but change of Congress is what I would say. Because yeah. that's what's behind uh, how those um, uh, departments are, are run and the philosophy behind them. Just to be, I, I'm not being political at all. <laughs> and I am not able to reveal anything. But there are several things cooking. Uh, some downtown and some between town and Whitaker, there's several things cooking. So there's some good, uh, you know, I make this joke about things sometimes when you keep going, oh, we need more energy around the arts, I want something to, to go, and it gets too quiet for a long time. And then, I, you know, I think the answer is I should have threatened closure a long time ago, then everybody would have gone crazy, and then we would have had some more... Um, action and steam around because I think that's what's happening right now is people are of course and should be very upset about losing some of the things they really care about and so they're inspired now to get busy and so I'm hoping out of that will come the next evolution in the arts in the city of Eugene. So thank you for being here.
I want to introduce right now uh, Patricia Montoya Donahue, who is with the Art Forum. Yep. And the Art Forum has an exhibit in the room right next door. And so Patricia is going to tell us a little bit about that. First of all, if some of the uh, Art Forum members can come up, don't be shy. Art Forum folks. Okay, we have 13 folks that are represented next door. We meet once a month. This is open to the community. And, um, oh, thank you. We meet once a month, third Mondays of the month from 6 to 7 at the Lincoln Gallery. This is OSLP Arts and Culture Program. And um, so they host us. Anybody in the community, community can come and join us. Every month we have a challenge and it's really optional whether or not you want to be part of that. We do have some flyers next door or in the room and if you have any questions these folks would be more than welcome to um, answer them for you. All right, great. Well, we'll let you enjoy the art. There's obviously a lot to see here at the New Zone Gallery, so um, enjoy everything and we'll let you know when it's time to move on to the next stop. I'd like to say a few words if you don't mind.